Hello and welcome back to our push pull leg series. Today we'll be going over the final two workouts, which are legs A and legs B. If you haven't watched the previous two videos, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can use the full workout split in the most effective manner. The first workout will be legs A. This workout will be quads dominant, meaning we will target the quads mainly. Legs B will be hamstrings and glutes dominant. Exercise number one is a lying hamstring curl. This exercise will train the hamstring in the shortened position due to your hip being in extension, which will shorten the hamstring. Also, another benefit of doing the lying hamstring curl first is that it will warm up the knee for our second movement, which will be a heavy quad compound movement, which will reduce the amount of warming up needed, which will help save time if time is an issue, and it will allow for better performance as you are more mentally focused as you're already somewhat in the session as you've already done an exercise prior to it which can help improve performance exercise number two will be a hack squat hack squat is a great movement as it's externally braced meaning you're able to put more tension onto the quads than say a barbell squat where you have to brace it with your body and your abs also hack squats allow full knee flexion which allows you to stretch your quad out the most compared to a barbell squat where you're unlikely to be able to get your hamstring to your calf due to the lack of dorsiflexion you have at the ankle. Even if you are able to get your hamstring to a calf because you have good flexibility, you're probably compensating for it somewhere else. I'll show an example of this on the screen. So if you're going down in a barbell squat, you're likely to lean forward and hip flex slightly so you're able to get deeper into the squat. And because of the weight being close to the knee joint, it will mean less tension is on the knee because the moment arm is shorter and more of the tension will be placed on the glutes and spinal erectors. This is a benefit of the hack squat as you can keep your hip in a 90 degree angle and keep the tension on the quads while allowing for full knee flexion. Exercise number three in this legs A workout is a leg extension. The leg extension is a staple of my training program as it is the only leg exercise which will train the quads in the shortened position this is when your knee is fully extended also it will help to get any stimulus left which you had left from the hack squat prior to this meaning you're able to finish off the quads nicely the best way to do this is to make sure you're pausing at the top so you are actually training the quads in a shortened position and make sure your hip your knee and your ankle are all in one line because the knee is a hinge joint so you want everything to be flowing parallel together so you're minimizing forces going into the knee which can help to reduce the chance of injury and little niggles that you'll get here and there the final exercise in the legs a is a hip loaded calf raise the reason i've chosen a hip loaded calf raise is that it takes more joints out of the movement because you are not using your spine to hold the weight as if you're doing a standing calf raise this will allow for better focus on the calf a standing calf raise we would likely to bias your gastrocnemius and then a bent leg calf raise is likely to bias your soleus okay so that is a quick overview of legs a which is quads dominant now we'll go to our more glutes and ham dominant legs workout which is legs b the first exercise in legs b is a romanian deadlift also known as the rdl the reason i've chosen rdl is because it is a great movement to stretch out the hamstrings and glutes and help to train the muscles in long muscle lengths which have been shown to be increasingly more beneficial to hypertrophy due to the mechanism called stretch mediated hypertrophy which is basically muscles longer lengths are more prone to muscle growth the reason i've chose to put the rdl first in the session is because it is a big compound movement which requires all your focus and energy and intensity you're able to bring to be able to progress to be able to keep adding weights or reps if you have your rdl later on in the session you'll already be fatigued from exercises prior to it which can reduce the chance of progressive overloading as you're not focused and mentally there and it can also reduce the weight you can lift exercise number two is a seated hamstring curl in legs a we learn a lying hamstring curl to train the hamstring in the shortened range the lying hamstring curl in legs b will train it in the length of the range this is because the hip is in flexion which means that it will stretch out the hamstring so when your hip is in flexion 
and your knee is extended, the hamstrings will be fully lengthened. When your hip is in extension and your knee is flexed, the hamstring will be fully shortened. Also, because you've already trained your hamstrings in the RDL, the seated hamstring curl is a more stable movement and when you're more neurologically fatigued, it's better to have a more stable movement after it to help it finish it off. This is similar to the hack squat leg extension combo in leg Z. Exercise number three is the leg press. This is the only movement that trains the quad in, the se in this session and it's quite a fatiguing movement, but seeing as it's the only quad movement in this session, it will allow enough time to recover for when you hit your quad dominant legs A workout. To make sure you're able to train your quads as much as possible on this, put the seat back as far as possible as this will improve the range of motion as your hip flexors will take more time to get fully shortened as they're already stretched because your torso is further away from your hip which lengthens out the hip flexors. I don't know if that makes sense but there we are. Put your feet as low on the platform as possible without your heels peeling off as when your heels peel off it just reduces the force output you have as you have less contact and surface area on the pad. So go as low as possible until your heels come off then slowly if your heel if you find your heels are coming off slowly and incrementally slowly invite your heels further up the pad until they don't come off okay so we'll go to the final exercise now which is a seated calf raise this exercise as explained earlier will train the soleus muscles as your knee is flexed 